So this is question number two from the 2016 AB free response set. Uh, and this is a calculator question that deals with a velocity function. And so they tell you for positive times, particle is going to move back and forth along the x-axis. Velocity of the particle is going to be modeled by this function right here. Uh, the particle has a position of 2 on the x-axis at time 4. So the one thing that can be a little bit confusing about situations like this, if you're not careful, is if, if you're thinking about the graphs, t is going to definitely be your independent variable, so that's what's going to get plotted along the x-axis. Uh, v values are going to get plotted on the y-axis, but if you're thinking about a function, x is actually going to depend on t. Now we might need that at some point in time within this problem. Uh, it's it's difficult to transition from x being plotted on the x-axis to x being plotted on the y-axis, but you have to kind of recognize in a situation similar to this that x is definitely dependent on t, which is why we kind of swap where x is going to appear graphically. But anyhow, if you read part a here, at time t equals 4, the particle is the particle speeding up or slowing down? And so speed, the easiest way to define it is to define it as the absolute value of velocity. And so if a velocity graph is approaching zero, it's the speed of the object is slowing down at that point. If the velocity graph is moving away from zero, uh, the, then the speed of the object is going up or increasing. Uh, so if you figure out on the velocity graph where t equals 4 is, it's, it's right here, and, and so the thing that I'm a little concerned with when I look at that point right there, I don't know if I am past the peak of this sine wave or if I'm still kind of working my way upward toward it. Uh, if I'm working my way upward toward it, if I'm on this piece of the sine wave, uh, then speed, speed is increasing because my velocity is moving away from zero. But if I'm on this downward portion of the sine wave, uh, my velocity is moving towards zero and my speed would therefore be decreasing. So what I did is I went into the calculate menu and I figured out what the slope of the tangent line was at the x value of 4. And what ended up happening is I got a negative slope and what that indicates is that yeah my graph is starting its down slope here so my velocity graph is moving towards zero therefore my object is slowing down uh, an alternate explanation would be since you have a positive velocity but a negative acceleration your speed is going to be decreasing in part b it says find all times between zero and three when the particle changes directions justify your answer so this is the velocity graph plotted on the window from 0 to 3. And if you think about what causes the particle to change directions, it's when velocity changes signs. This whole entire stretch of the graph right here, when the velocity is positive, that indicates the object is moving to the right. And then this little stretch of the graph down here, uh, where the velocity is negative, that indicates motion that's happening in the left-hand direction. And so the object changes directions once, don't really know what this word is. Sorry about that. Uh, but uh, happens once, and it happens anytime the velocity changes signs. In part C, it wants us to find the position of the particle at time zero. Now, the sneaky thing about this is that what we have is we have the position of the particle at time four, and we want to kind of work backward in time to try and figure out what's happening at time t equals zero. Uh, usually, we work forward in time in situations like this. And so if, if you think about how we could find what the x coordinate of the object is at four, we could take the x coordinate of the object at zero, the starting position of the object, and we could add on how much the position changes by between zero and four by integrating the rate of change of position or by integrating velocity. Uh, this is a calculation we've done a bunch of times. If we want to find x of four, all we have to do is solve this equation right here for excuse me, if we want to find x of 0, all we have to do is solve this equation right here for x of 0. So x of 4 minus this integral is going to be what we compute to determine what x of 0 is. And then this is a computation that you can do on the calculator. So if you do this on the calculator 2 for x of 4, right, the position of the object at time 4, minus the value of this integral, what you're going to end up with is you're going to end up with negative 3.815. Uh, and again, that's the x coordinate of the object at t equals 0, or the, the spot on the x-axis where it sits at time 0. And then in the last piece of this one, it says find the total distance the particle travels from time 0 to time 3. 
So I still have the velocity graph plotted here. I kind of traced it in blue uh, on the interval from zero to three. If I just do the integral from zero to three, that computation is going to make all of this distance covered positive. And then the remaining portion between the blue graph and the t-axis uh, is going to be returned to us as a negative value since that portion of the graph is now dropped below the t-axis or the independent variable axis. Uh, that would indicate the total change in position from 0 to 3. In fact, that's what we did back here from 0 to 4. Uh, so an integral like this, without any adjustment to distance that's covered in the negative direction, is going to give you the change in position, but not a total distance traveled. To turn into a total distance traveled, what we want to do is we want to change all of these negative velocities. And that's just for this last little stretch of the graph. We want to change all these negative velocities to positive ones by tossing opposite values around the velocity function. And so that's what I've tried to graph here in green. Basically, when you take the absolute value of the function, it just reflects any pieces that are sitting below the independent variable axis up above the independent variable axis and the integral from 0 to 3 of the absolute value of v of t is going to return all this to us as a positive and then add on this area as a positive since it's now above the x-axis or the independent variable axis.